Here we're going to look at osteoporosis and some other bone abnormalities. Now in general, we're looking at some of these abnormalities, we're looking at weakening of bone structure. So here we have a normal individual. We see the width of the trabeculae here. That would be considered normal. And sadly, in this individual, we have a much thinner um, trabeculae here, indicating these bones are more likely to be fractured or broken than the individual here, which we're considering to have a normal amount of uh, bone density and structure. So these homeostatic imbalances, osteomalacia is one of these conditions. This is where bones are inadequately mineralized, causing softened and or weakened bones to develop. See that evident here in this x-ray. Main symptom of this is pain when weight is put on the affected bone, because we have these kind of inadequate mineralization, these kind of small fractures that may be occurring, this can cause pain to the individual. What causes this is insufficient calcium in the diet or by vitamin D deficiency. Now, insufficient calcium in the diet could mean that the individual is just not consuming enough calcium, or the calcium the individual is consuming is not bioavailable to the body. It's not able to be broken down and used in the bones. Rickets is an extreme case of this, and this occurs in children, where bones of children are inadequately mineralized, causing softened and weakened bones. Bowed legs and deformities in the pelvis, skull, and rib cage are common um, with those affected by rickets. It's caused by the same things we talked about earlier, the insufficient calcium in the diet or by vitamin D deficiency. Remember, insufficient calcium could be just the total amount of calcium or the amount of bioavailable calcium in the diet. Osteoporosis you might be familiar with or heard of before. This is actually a group of diseases in which bone reabsorption outpaces bone deposits. Remember, bone is constantly being broken down and repaired. In this case, it's being broken down at a greater rate than it's being repaired at. They should be about equal and to maintain our normal bone here. Here we have clearly an excessive osteoclast activity, excessive amount of bone being broken down. In the normal bone, remember the osteoblast and osteoclast activities are both equal. The rate of breaking down is equal to the rate of rebuilding. In osteoporosis specifically, spongy bone of the spine is most vulnerable. This occurs most often in postmenopausal women because of a change in hormones, and bones become so fragile that sneezing or stepping off a curb can cause fractures. So again, in extreme cases, even everyday activities can cause um, bones to be fractured or broken. Osteoporosis, a single gene that encodes for vitamin D docking, determines the tendency to accumulate bone mass early in life and also the risk for osteoporosis later in life. See a nice graph here with years and age of an individual and the bone mass. The bone mass is measured in the total mass of skeleton calcium in grams. You see at a very young age, we see a dramatic increase in both males and females. And we see, start to see a separation occur. Well, peak bone mass in males occurs right around the same age for females, at 25 to kind of 30 years old. However, males' bone mass peaks at a higher rate than females. After about age 40, we notice a decrease in bone mass with age for both males and females. But after menopause for females, we see a dramatic, rapid decrease and then a level and often a more consistent rate. So this is why females need to be a little bit more concerned with osteoporosis, but it still can occur in males. Treatments for this uh, disease is calcium and vitamin D supplements. Again, often you see vitamin D with calcium to help the bioavailability of that. Increased weight-bearing exercises for individuals. Hormones, such as estrogen replacement therapy, abbreviated HRT, slows bone loss. Uh, natural pedestrian creams prompts new bone growth, so this can help reduce negative impacts of osteoporosis. And also statins increase bone mineral density. It's important though to keep in mind with these hormones um, and other treatments that there can be side effects associated with these. So you have to outweigh some of the risk factors with some of the potential benefits. Piaget's disease here is a disease of bone that causes your bones to break down too quickly, thus cause your body to make to replace bone too quickly. What this is, is it's bones breaking down and being rebuilt at too quick of a rate. 
as a result, the replace bone is very soft and brittle. It's not, it has a lot of structure to it. It's not being made at the pace it should be. It's kind of being slapped together really quick. This can occur in any bone of the body, but it's most common in the arms, legs, spine, pelvis, and the skull. It's most common actually in Caucasian males with risk increasing with the age of that individual. The interesting part is there's really no cure and doctors aren't really sure what causes this disease. But treatment revolves around trying to slow the rate of decay and trying to strengthen the existing bone. Basically we want bone that's rebuilt to have structure. This is an extreme case of it. This is a much milder case. But that rebuilding bone too quickly cause it to be soft and brittle, not the integrity that we need to support um, our body with our skeletal system. Development aspects of bone. Well, the mesoderm gives rise to embryonic um, mes mesenchymal cells, which produce membranes and cartilages that form embryonic skeletons. What's interesting about this is the embryonic skeleton ossifies at a very predictable timetable. This allows the fetal age to easily be determined from sonograms. So if someone wasn't exactly sure of the um, age of their baby um, through sonograms, by looking at the degree of ossification, and then determine the age of that baby. That age determination can then determine the um, date of conception and potential date of birth. Uh, so just an interesting way through sonograms, uh, a non-invasive kind of picture through this predictable timetable can allow us to determine the age of the unborn baby. More development aspects of bone. At birth, most long bones are well ossified. Um, during infancy and childhood, the uh, epithelial plate activity is stimulated by growth hormone. During puberty, testosterone and estrogens can promote adolescent growth spurts and can cause um, these bones to continually to develop and ossify. What's important to remember is that by age 25, nearly all the bones are completely ossified. In old age, bone re reabsorption predominates. So that resorption of bone, that breakdown of bone, can kind of outpace the rate at which bones are rebuilt. Lastly, um, just to kind of put that bone density, regardless of age, uh, the environment an individual lives in or participates in can impact this. Typically, an elder person typically loses 1-2% to of bone every year, meaning the breakdown is greater than the rebuilding. But also, regardless of age, in space, a person suffers from about 1-2% to 2 of bone loss every month. However, this is mostly reversible. That lack of gravity, that lack of compression on the bone can reduce its um, density. As a result, astronauts will go on treadmills that they're kind of held down uh, to help kind of in, create an impact, to help pack in those bones so that they try to lose as the least amount as possible. But 1-2% to 2 of bone loss every month is quite a bit considering an elderly person loses that same rate about every year. The advantage of when you go to space, and I've never been yet, uh, but the advantage is that this is mostly reversible. Um, so it's one of those things where astronauts, when they come back to Earth, need to con continue to participate in these types of trainings and exercises so they can rebuild their bone mass.